What the bloody hell's going on? Today's video is all about how to cut one of these open. The reason why we're gonna make this video is because seeing what's inside your oil filter is important. For those of you who have cut these open before, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But for those of you who haven't, watch on. Oftentimes, your engine is a big investment. It's literally the heart of the car. And if the thing's not in good nick, you'll wanna know about it. And the best way to do that is to have a look inside this. It's gonna tell you if there's any bearing material, any dirt, and any bearing material <laughs> that's floating around your engine. I would say it's one of the most important maintenance aspects of owning a tough car. Every time you change the oil, you should be cutting this open to check on the health of your engine. Now, I know that this video might seem a bit tedious and that a lot of you who are watching the channel probably already know how to cut something with a grinder. But what you need to understand is that it's very important that you take care of your shit. So, Damien, the mechanic, is going to impart some of his knowledge to you guys and maybe you'll learn something, maybe you won't. Let's get straight into it. Just have a look and... F I don't know. Let's go have a look. Damien's got it set up over here. So we'll go and have a look at like the stuff that you need to get it done. This is the gear that you need. It's just about everything, yeah. To set take... A, set of cutters. I mean, the grinder's not the most ideal thing to cut open a filter. You can, I think, probably about $30 on eBay, you can get a filter cutter. Um, they do a much needed job, but for what we're doing and for anyone else doing this, this is probably the most accessible thing that you have. So a grinder can be done. You just, you gotta take your time and you gotta realize there's gonna be a little bit of dust in there, but you're looking for brass and alloy and stuff anyway. So a lot of the time you can tell the difference. So um, I think it'll become more clear too when we cut it open that the actual, the stuff that gets into the filter, you can really tell cause it's really deep down oh, in the grooves. In there, yeah, you see the alloy, you'll see anything. Mm. Like, I've never cut a filter open from my engine. It was, I've built it now probably three years ago. I've done the first power cruise in it and just been getting thrashed ever since. So this will be the first filter. This isn't the one from the last comp, but mm. um, we will be doing that one after the last burnout comp just to see the difference. But this was the service I'd done just before. So comp. this is out of your VB winging it. Yep, this is out of winging it. Now, Give us a brief rundown for those who haven't seen it. Brief rundown on the engine combo. So it's just a carbureted six litre L98 out of a 2010 um, VE. Um, made it all carby, cam, springs, buddy, deck the heads a bit, whatnot. But essentially the bottom end is a stock, stock rolling bottom end. Um, just a bit of a clean up, but um, yeah, I have not other than the build probably after the straight after building it we haven't actually opened up a filter as much as we should but every meeting we change filter and oil it's just not worth it especially running ethanol like we run pen right 10 tenths in everything but every single meeting new filter new oil same as the gearbox and yeah just the best way of keeping it fresh keeping yeah. it alive and it's been three years now and there's no issues with the engine, so we'll see what's what's coming out of it. Cheap insurance, eh? Hey? Just the regular oil changes, especially when you're beating on it. Cheap insurance, definitely, because if you pick up a few little chunks in here, but the motor's still running good, well, chances are you could pull it down and get away with some new bearings, whereas you let it go till it stops, well, you're up for whatever fucking, whatever breaks, you know, so. That's it. Um, right. So yeah, we'll cut this one open and press the oil out of it and see what's in there. Did I just see the top spinning? Yeah. It spun <laughs> out of there. So just quick, just leave it like where it is. So smell that ethanol. Yeah, it does. It smells like E85. The um <clears throat> you're not lopping the whole top off. 
No. You're just cutting the outside. Yeah, so if you can just cut the skin, that's going to minimise the steel you get through there. You're not just fucking shit up for no reason. Yep. So, and then as you see in the video, then as soon as we got it free, the whole lot just spun, and now it's just as you see come apart. Stuff on the top, clearly that's just going to be, you know, all the stuff from grinding. But yeah, just turn a blind eye. The stuff in here is what we actually want to see. Thought it would have been drained a bit more, but it all seems to be holding in the filter pretty good. Well, there's not much fuel in there then. <laughs> <laughs> you mean because it didn't catch fire? Right, yeah. Well, that and the oil still got some consistency to it. Yeah. Fills up full of fuel, it just runs out. So we might let that drain for five minutes and cut him open and have a look. So next step, we're gonna cut the element out, which is the elements, the paper, paper in that there. actually does the filtering, like the filter part yep. of the filter. So you got a couple of some tough snippy things there. Yeah. Scissors yeah. even. Some panthers or scissors, something you're gonna be able to get right through and cut. Does make a bit of a mess. But I mean, you probably could go around with a knife or anything you want really. Um, I've found just go through, cut it a few times until you get right around the other side and then do the bottom. And should be able to just pull it out. And of course, the way we're doing this as well is doing it with anything, you know, other than a press, which you could, I don't know, you could come up with another, uh, another way to squeeze the oil out. Two blocks of wood under your car tire or something. <laughs> But so what's um like what do you mean by pressing pressing it like what's so what we're going to do it just makes it a lot easier to see i mean a lot of a lot of times a lot of people will just pull that out and just have a look but um if you actually press it you get rid of all the oil and it actually comes a lot clearer and you can just pretty much as clear as day see what's in there That's the part we'll press, that's the filter paper. That's what catches all your contaminants and metal and... And what side does it capture the debris on? Like you've got the inside and then you've got the outside, so to speak. Yeah, so a lot of the time it is the outside. Um, it all depends on the filter setup. Um, what way the oil's flowing, like yeah. Um, well, on these cars, like say on a Commodore or an LS or whatever, it's I think it's on the outside, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they push the flow through the outside, it comes up the middle. Yeah. Um, I suppose we'll be able to... So that's what it looks like when it's, it's full wet. of oil. Preliminary inspections, no real shiny... No shiny bits at all which is good but when we press it out that'll give you like a real good indication eh? yeah you'll be able to see um a lot better picture of what's going on you'll be able to see if it's fucked. yeah but first <laughs> look it's looking good <laughs> pretty much you can do it however however you like when it comes to pressing it you just want something to catch the oil um a rag paper towel, anything really. Just clump the paper up. Wrap it in a rag. Now all we do is just have these two steel blocks. We sit it in between. Now all you want to do is just as much pressure as you like really until you squeeze the majority of the oil out you'll probably see a bit come out the sides but 
Pretty much surging. Put whatever you want on there. Oh, yeah, it's running out the other side. Pretty much you're just draining out that filter. Getting rid of all the oil out of it so you can see. That should just about do it. Leave it for a couple of minutes, but get as much out as possible. You can do it a couple of times if the first time didn't get it dry enough for you. This is usually all we got to do. Oh man, look at that! It completely changes colour. Wow. Back to paper, pretty much. Yeah. You can see another one in the background there. I think that's the one from Cuddles, actually. Yeah, it might be. I think it was. I was looking at it over there before. Anyway. For the metal, so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that is looking pretty clean. That is very, very clean. So usually, I don't know, you probably see one little speckle of alloy there. That could be fucking anything. But, looking for any chunks, any decent spots. Probably the only flake. And in a bit, we'll um, I might show them a bad one, like what a, what an actual bad one looks like. Yeah, yeah. one from a, a motor that was knocking, that was like making a, a whole lot of noise, and just obviously you could tell that the bearing was one hundred percent disintegrated. Yeah, you can see, and. Yeah, I don't know, it comes down to... Just lay it down, I'll, I'll get like a shot of it, like running across, um, just running across it kind of thing. This is the one we just pressed out. Just give you a good look. Really nothing of note here, eh? Like, I don't know, what's your opinion, man? There's, there's no yeah, big chunks, there's... It's very good. Uh, that's in good nick, man. I'll rip the one out after the burnout comp, but yeah. That one's very good. This is an old one. This one's from my car, from Cuddles. And there you go, there's a nice big bit there in the center of the frame. Um, That's as much as you'd want to see, really. Like, you can see the little bits, they're all shiny, they're kind of looking like, um, looking like a little bit of a glitter factory. Oh, yeah, look at that. You put that in there, surely. Definitely not. <laughs> what about those other ones? Yeah, there's a few decent ones in there, eh? You can see it, you can just see, they really glisten with this light on, you can see them. Yeah. You know? That, any worse than that, and see. you'd want to be, it's just like a lot dirtier too, you can tell. Yeah. Um. Any dirtier than what you just saw there and, and you really want to be thinking about how you're treating the car, maybe is your oil, oiling system up to the task of what you're putting it through? Um, any of you guys that are drifters, you're going to be seeing a bit of oil surge, oil starvation around corners and stuff like that. All of that impacts, you know, if, you, if your car is without oil for even like, you know, half a second, even less, like that's time where the oil wedge that's in your bearing can disappear and your bearing will be touching each other or, you know, touching the crank or whatever. Um, and that's where the damage happens. When you've got oil forming a wedge between the two bearings, they're, they're all good. But when if that oil wedge is gone for whatever reason, <laughs> Tame has just brought over a dodgy one. We'll um, yeah. we'll show you what what can happen and what your oil filter will look like um, when things are really bad. A lot of it can be lack of maintenance, like especially with ethanol cars. Um, now the little brother in EcoBoost learnt the hard way. Told him to service at every meeting. Didn't. Um, took a gut full of uh, well, not a gut full, but. The oil just over the time started thinning out more and more from the ethanol, um, especially because you still had the same oil from the dyno tune, so it was very, very rich when it went there. 
Um, it got through a few meetings, but yeah, like without doing your oil, it got really thin and picked a bearing up. And what do you mean by picked a bearing up? So there wasn't the not enough viscosity in the oil between the bearing and the crank, and essentially, pretty much just like having fuel in there instead of lubing it, it's actually grabbed onto the bearing and starts spinning the bearing and the housing. So lack of lubrication. So bad oil quality can all do that. That's why. In our cars, you know, every meeting we're dropping the oil filter. It's just, it's what you have to if you want to do this kind of stuff to these cars. Um, he'll never do that again. He learned the hard way. This is the actual filter out of EcoBoost after said um, bearing failed. <laughs> have a look at them side by side there. So the bottom one, obviously, full. Is an absolute glitter factory. Like, there is all those shiny bits, is all tiny bits of bearing, and there's even like a paste on there, man. It's turned into a freaking paste. Yeah, she wasn't, uh, well. But you'll leave you alone, he'll never do that again. And um, that's why we continue to service and monitor them every meeting, because that would have been either caught or prevented from servicing. So, um, yeah, so that's just a quick rundown of using the things you've got in your own in your own shed. I mean, I'm sure nearly everyone's got a grind. You might not have a press, but like I said, wrap it in a rag and two bits of wood and put it under your car tire or something, or some, even a 20, 20 kilo oil drum, like sit on there for maybe even half an hour and just let it ooze out. But there, there is ways around the house to do it, but yeah, if you're doing the stuff like we're doing, just giving it hell every single meeting, then yeah, you'd be silly not to be doing this every single meeting. Definitely need to be checking the oil and making sure the oil is actually staying like um, at a high quality. And like, yeah, as I was saying, like the ethanol, the methanol will actually, even though you're running good oil, you can still start thinning it out and stuff if you don't change it. Um, you've really got to keep on to it because the oiling is the biggest part of your motor and like yeah and when you talk about the fuel and stuff like what like tell the guys who maybe they don't understand why the fuel can play an impact because people might think well you you know there's no fuel in your oil but actually well you can because you're running a lot more of it as well the ethanol the methanol you're, you're pumping the fuel in there and these race motors, like you do, it does get down past your pistons, like no matter what, like E85 car, um, you do tend to get a bit more down in the bottom. Um, there is one thing I would really like to play with is total seal rings. They're rings without a gap and that prevents all that kind of stuff. So that could be coming up. So the fuel washing down the side of the bore and, and making it past the piston rings ends up in the sump. Definitely. And, and that's that's and what's changing the viscosity. 100%, yeah. And I mean, it's a lot lot more prone on these cars than what we're doing because they're, they're probably a bit more richer than a street driven car and they're copying a lot more. So, you know, a street driven one, not as like um, critical, like, you probably wouldn't get as much ethanol and stuff in there, especially if it's just street driven. But if you're doing what we're doing and they're just constantly copping a flogging, like you definitely want to be onto your oil and like, and you can smell it yourself standing back here. You can yeah. smell the E85 and you can even smell the additive we were running in the fuel, the M2 additive. Like, yeah, just shows you how much gets into the oil. Like, you can you can actually smell it from the oil. So, yeah, we were smelling. Um, if you can see in there. Um, it smells. It, it smells like your car. I was saying before. It smells like E85. Um, it, it gets in the oil. If you don't believe us, like just do it on your own car. You, I mean, petrol. Like Damien was saying, you know, you might not be running as rich or whatever. E85. You're running like 1.3 to 1.5 times the amount of fuel. Methanol. It's more like two times. So there's a lot more um, opportunity for it to skip past and um, end up in your oil. 100% definitely and then especially if you play it around like our cars are carby so you you do get that bit of fuel sitting on top sometimes or um, you know it's really pumping the fuel in there it's not as not as governed as mm. 
injected, but still even eco boost. Like if you if you do two meetings on the same oil, you know you smell ethanol in the oil. Like it's it's it does get in there. Um, you know, it took a bit. It did take a few meetings for him to roll a bearing, but that just comes down to yeah not doing it on time. But um, but yeah, that just goes to show that. And you, know, you definitely got to stay on top of these things, stay on top of the, the oil quality. And even if you've done every couple of meetings, you just, it's a good indication. And if you pick up on a few specs of metal, then you know you're going to get away with rebuilding it a lot cheaper than, um, than rebuilding the whole motor and replacing. In his case, it actually chewed the crank. So, um, letting it get this bad. Yeah, we actually end up getting another wrecker motor and ripping the crank out of it to be able to use it. And that was all just from poor oil quality. That's the end of the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and most importantly, I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you did like this sort of stuff, Leave us a comment down below. We love hearing what we did wrong. So definitely, definitely just post some shit down there and just f up my day. And no, no, no. <laughs> definitely <laughs> tell us what you think. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. We, we touched on it a little bit in one of the videos, but at least this one, it's, it's just focuses on that. So, you know, if you just want to go for a quick look to see how to do it, you can just jump on there and have a quick look, see how to cut your filter open. But let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see. So we're down here, this is Damo's shop. He runs- um, Motorsports. Yeah, Winging at Motorsports. So that's where we do all the engine building. It's the performance side of, of stuff. And that's where this um, these videos are coming from. If you got any value from today's video, guys, give us a like. Definitely consider con subscribe. Blah, blah, blah. If you're interested in this sort of stuff, if you've got your own tough car, um, if you're here in Brizzy and you see us out at Power Cruise or Power Play or any event that we're at, because we, we try and get out to as many events as we can, come and say g'day, come and talk to us, because um, you know we love Definitely speaking to, to people, like, guys with the same sort of passion, you know what I mean? 100%. Um, and again, on the, on the guys that know how to do the body work, we will have winging it down here, replacing the lower quarter <laughs> in the next coming weeks that I'm attempting to do all myself. And if anyone knows what they're talking about, don't be afraid to throw a few pointers out. But we're gonna be trying to get it ready. We've got two comps, maybe one, like we got the Fridays and Power on Petrie in August we're trying to hit. So uh, motor, everything running mint as usual, but yeah, we've just got to do some body work, the stuff that we kind of haven't touched a lot on other than Kieran's roof and didn't turn out too bad, but <laughs> so we're about to tackle cutting some panels off. So we'll see how this goes, but um, yeah, stay tuned. That'll be coming up shortly. Yeah, hopefully get ready for some more events and try and make it out to some events and just, you know, meet some people. And That's the aim of the game. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one. Have a good one.